a scene like the wedding scene, which is a rather large one, we have got almost the maximum amount of actors in, which means that my main team, who consists of 22 people, might be sort of at least tripled, because we also have got all of the uh, rest of the tom that needs to be there. We've got the queen, we've got the ladies in waiting. Like, we have to fill a church. We need to have a hairstyle that can hold the weight of the veil of Edwina and the tiara when she's running away. You have to create a makeup that can withstand tears. I think that there is so much to commend this show on, and I think just as much as the acting. And I don't think I'd fully feel like Edwina without the costumes and the hair and the makeup. Like, it's now part of the process of me preparing for the scene. The pre-call of something like this could be up to four hours. So it's quite a lot to sort of think about. When do we put on the tiara and the, and the veil? I am the nightmare for hair and makeup because my hair is about a millimetre high. Uh, so this is a 360 degree wig from Wacker Shake, who is a wig genius. And there is a flair and a particularity that is about my personality sieved through the character of Lady Danbury and how we bring all those elements together to create this on-screen Lady Danbury. And it gives me the confidence or the wobbliness or whatever it is I need to be playing at that time to sort of tell the story visually as well as the <laughs> that I will be doing. Uh, here's, the, here's the crew right here. All right, camera set. Hair and makeup needs to work really close with costume. Let's say you've got the fascinator that's got a beautiful movement, then you want that movement to follow through in the hairstyle as well. So you have to work really well with costume. We're constantly on the phone, we're constantly checking in. It's really important that the two work together. For Edwina, I wanted her to have a veil for the drama, so this was a discussion with Erica of how the veil would sit in her hair. And we have this kind of back and forth discussion of what's working for both of us and visually what works best. So that's really nice to have that relationship with her. Uh, the other person that we really needs to be our best friend ever is obviously the lighting and camera departments. Where are we going to see this hair shape? Is this person going to be stand backlit in a window? Then maybe I would steer away from doing something that may look frizzy backlit. One look that you put on in the morning, you might have shot on before in one set of lighting. If you then move them into another lighting, they might look totally different and you might have to just warm it up just because of that. You might need help with a camera angle or maybe just move the light ever so slightly to just help that you can't see an edge. Uh, or something like that. Uh, so, you know, you, you, you work really tightly with all the different departments. When I walk around looking at people on set, I obviously done um, a test with the actors before, so we know what they are going to look like. I've also seen a lineup of all of the extras, but so much can happen from when I seen it to when it's going to be shot at. It might have been bloody hurricane. Somebody might have just fallen asleep. Somebody might have stepped on something and the wig might have slipped. And because there is such a vast amount number of people, um, even though most everybody has got a person that looks after them, I still just have a look at it to make sure that it's nothing that I have seen. And I think some days you see things and some days you don't. People are getting up at 3.30 in the morning and maybe coming home at like nine o'clock at night. What we do as a team is just trying and help each other out. And I think that that's really important because it's a really, really hard job that we're doing. We spend so much of our time in hair and makeup and it's always such a good vibe. Um, I remember meeting Erica for the first time and she had these plans for how she wanted Colin to look and how she wanted me to feel within the show, especially coming back from traveling. What was really important to me and what she did so well was make me feel like my opinion was important and um, like essential to the conversation. When like the wig comes on, like I do suddenly go, okay, so it is like, and then also you start your days with them and you end your days with makeup, bookending your days with 
those wonderful people. It's like lovely, you know? And it's a lot of energy that they will have to, because they're starting their day with us and they've got so much energy and it's beautiful and they don't need to be like that, but they are because they're wonderful people. They're dealing with a mad amount of essays who all look like magazine box fresh. The queen's wig, the this big one over there, it's almost like a special effects on its own. When do we put on that wig? Like she can't sit in a car wearing it. So we have to travel her to location before she puts on a wig. And that's happened with all of these wigs. So it's all about sort of trying to figure out the location, where can we do it? And is there enough light? And like all of that kind of stuff. So it's a constant problem solving. If I have got two hours with one person, then they also have to have breakfast and they also have to be in with costume. They also have to be in with sound, because sound need to wire everything. So there is so much that has to happen before the camera can actually turn over on anyone that even the slightest one minute is just so important and you have to be really, really good at timekeeping. Ready and action. Everything that we do literally is a sandcastle. So whilst I build this sandcastle, I have to be happy it might be that the waves come and get it before it's ever going to be shot at. It might never be seen. It could be that they never even shoot on it. It could be that they edit it out. I might have spent like three weeks on something that they're never going to show. So I think that that's the, the secret of sanity in this industry is just be happy with the sandcastle when you make it. You don't need an audience for it.